Julia and welcome back to my channel and for today's video I'm going to be talking about my top 17 books of the year of 2017. So these are all books that I loved. Obviously they're my favorites of this year, some of my favorites of all time, things like that. And I'm really bad at narrowing down favorite books so the first like seven are kind of like should some of them should be like in the top like 10 and then I'm like no and then it's a mess <laughs> like but the point is is I love these all but they are kind of in order but I love them all great um and I've been still making this video so we're gonna make it snappy so that because I don't think you guys want to sit down all day and watch my face so let's get into it here i have at number 17 i have eliza and her monsters by francesca zappia if you don't know this is a YA contemporary book about a girl who is uh struggles with ang social anxiety and anxiety in general and she writes and illustrates a web comic series that's really popular on the internet but no one knows like it's anonymous so they don't know that she's the one doing it so she goes to school and this boy, she meets this boy who's like a huge fan of her webcomic series and makes and writes fan fiction for it and they kind of, but she, he doesn't know that she's the one who runs the whole thing. She She's just like portrayed as like a fan and it's about that and their relationship and it's about Eliza and her coming of age story. I really loved it. I loved her other book last year. Uh, Francesca Zappia's other book was on my favorites last year and this book was just so good. I just loved it so much and it's so engaging, so interesting. I tapped so many things and I think it's definitely a one, a one, one that you should all check out if you haven't already. If here I have The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. This book is a really dark book that really surprised me. A girl named Alex whose sister was killed three years ago and the way she's coped with this is violence. So this book talks about how she knows how to kill people and we just follow someone in this mindset and someone that's really devious and there's so many other things and there's so many trigger warnings so definitely look into trigger warnings i know off the top of my head there's one for rape in this book so keep that in mind but very dark i loved the writing style and i really enjoyed the characters so like i didn't love that like enjoy is not the right word for this book but like for the characters but it was just it was really good Next up here I have If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. This book I read closer to the beginning of the year and this is a book that follows a transgender main character. It follows her um, as she's going to a new school after her transition and things like that and it just follows her character. It's so little but just so powerful and I would highly recommend this for so many reasons. And I just, I read it in the beginning of the year and I still think about it and it was so addictive to read. It was so insightful and I learned a lot from this book and I think it's definitely one that everyone should read so check it out. Next up here I have The Godfather by Mario Puzo. I have a review for this I'll link it up on the screen. Uh, you shouldn't be surprised to see this here basically this is it's kind of hard to describe it's a classic it involves the mafia there's Italian characters a lot of go not gore well there's blood death and all this stuff involved in it this book was just fantastic from the writing to like the story arc to just everything about it. I loved it so much and that's why it's one of my favorites of this year. And I don't know, like I don't think I'm going to, I don't know if I'm continuing or not because I liked this enough and I'm like, I don't know, but we'll see. It's quite a popular one and that is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This book is so good. It's contemporary. We follow a gay main character. It deals a lot with sadness. It's very relatable. And there's also like an underlying sci-fi element, which I also made a, a video about this at the beginning of the year called Why You Should Read We Are The Ants. So I'll have that linked. But this was just phenomenal. Again, I still think about it. I think I like started doing, yeah. So I started like drawing stuff in the cover and like I just loved this so much. It was like, oh yes, the first line is life is bullshit like who doesn't want to read that book <laughs> i feel like i'm showing you guys all ya but like these were my favorite books so like i don't care <laughs> um yeah there is a lot of ya but there is some adult i don't think you guys care whatever okay next is under rose tainted skies by louise gornell this book oh my gosh i love this so much this if you have anxiety or you struggle with any mental illness do not 
or at least proceed with caution because this describes like full on panic attacks and and I'm definitely like I was so impacted by this book. There's a small romance, but it basically it's a girl that has agoraphobia and there's some other trigger warnings like self-harm involved with this book, but it's just such a moving story. It's written so well and I'm so excited to pick up with whatever uh, Grinnell writes in the future and this was just so good. So good. I have a review for that one as well. So coming in at number 11, we have The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. This was gold. Like, so relatable, so much diversity, so much going on, beautifully written. I love this book so much, you need to read it. <laughs> this is about a girl named Molly who has had a bu bunch of unrequited crushes, and so she's never been, like, rejected, but she's never, like, what's the word? pursued any of um, these crushes that she's had and it's just it's very relatable to a lot of teenagers I feel and I like she knows how to write teenagers so, like I'm gonna pick up anything Becky Albertelli writes because I love this one so much and I also liked Simon but like I loved the upside of Unrequited and I did meet her and she was the sweetest little nugget I've ever seen and like she's so active on Twitter like I love this author and her books so much into the top 10 which this is a pretty interesting uh, stack, but coming in at number 10, we have Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy, which made a huge, just, I just wasn't expecting to love this as much as I did. Basically, it's about a girl named Ramona who's really tall, has long blue hair. She lives in Mississippi, I believe it is, if I'm thinking correctly, <laughs> but thinking about uh, if, I'm, if I'm accurate on that, I don't know, <laughs> I forget. But this book is just so good. It involves a girl like figuring out who she is. It's a coming of age story, just like a lot of these books are. And I just adored it so much. And it's definitely one of the, it, like it's one of the best contemporary books I've ever read. It's just so worth the read. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, it was so good and I loved it so much and I just enjoyed myself reading it so, like I just loved reading it so much. Um, it also involves like Hurricane Katrina. There's also like family elements, friendship, uh, relationships. There's just so much going on and it was so good and it just says, um, I got a sign this one as well. Uh, I was at a signing with uh, Becky Albertalli and Ramona, not Ramona, Julie Murphy and Angie Thomas as well. But this was so fantastic. At number eight, we have Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. This is about a older man who falls in love with a child and it's just as effed up as it sounds. Um, it was one of the most disturbing books I've ever read. It was one of the most graphic in ways because it describes like children's bodies like in that way, which is disgusting to me, but, like, you know, in a sexual way. Okay, um, but it was amazingly written, so, like, oh my god, like, so effed up, but so interesting to read, and it was just so good. Like, I couldn't, like, I want to reread, I'm going to reread this one this year in um, 2018, but this was just, oh my god. Great is It by Stephen King. You guys know I love this. I talk about this so much. Like, just look at the tabs. And this, you've heard of it, the film. I don't have to explain what it's about. Great. I get a lot of people have issues with this book and I definitely don't agree with like some things that happen later in the book and things like that. You guys know what I'm talking about if you've read it. But this was phenomenally written, a great story, interesting characters, just really good read and a really great king book and I loved it a lot <laughs> and yes <laughs> this next book I read in December and managed to squeeze its way into my top 10 list and that is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand this is actually a Christmas Carol retelling and it's so good it was written so well the romance was so cute the writing's amazing like I don't know what to say it was just so good and basically it says like every Scrooge deserves a second chance and we follow our main character who was a Scrooge and has now become the ghost of Christmas past and has to like go visit other Scrooges and it's just so interesting so well thought out so well written love the characters love the plot love the writing great read here I have Note to Self by Connor Franta and this is a non-fiction book about Connor Franta his life some stories he shares it's full of 
absolutely well just look at the end pages absolute like i tap a lot absolutely beautiful images really inspiring and insightful stories and poetry and i wasn't sure if i should put this in like my poetry thing but it's mostly a novel so like not a novel you know what i mean it's mostly a book okay but <laughs> yeah it's just absolutely stunning it was so insightful so thoughtful i love this so much it was inspirational to me i just think it's one of the best non-fiction books that i've read so here i have what i lost by alexandra Bellar. this book does have some serious trigger warnings for eating disorders and some other topics so keep that in mind before picking this up but a 17 year old girl who gets sent to an eating disorder facility and for her anorexia and it's about the people she meets there the facility as a whole the eating disorder things like that. It was one of the most insightful, realistic portrayals of some of like eating disorders and facilities that I've ever read about. It was so real and raw and it was so empowering and I love this so much. Like I don't know what else to say. It was so good. Next up here I have Warcraft by Mary Lou, which this is a sci-fi video game kind of book in a way it's about a game called Warcross and you can get transported into this world and it's kind of become everyone's lives and we follow our main character Amika who gets sent to Japan to meet the owner of Warcross after she hacks into the game and it's so fantastic I'm not a big sci-fi person like usually I couldn't get into sci-fi books but this book was absolutely phenomenal and I know some people have been picking it up on my account and loving it too so I'm like oh my god yes you loved you love Warcraft's great um but I love this book so much so interesting so engaging beautiful writing I just loved everything about it it was great like I can't I can't praise it enough coming in number three is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare fantastic phenomenal love this story love these characters i think you know what it's about it's the second book in the dark artifices series and it is the sequel to lady midnight great book along with that i have a court of wings and ruin which i felt every emotion while reading this i was pissed i was happy i was sad i was mad like i was freaking out like this book made such an impact on me and i also met her sarah jane ass i met her too um I went to a few like good side exists here. Oh, it's my other copy because I have two copies. <laughs> um, this is like one my my copy that's untouched, but I have a copy with tabs and she signed it too. So yes, love this book as well. And then coming into in a, my number one book of 2017 is Hunger by Roxane Gay. This is a nonfiction book that deals with Roxane Gay's story about her body and her life and it's just one of the most fantastic books I've ever read. It really gives a different perspective on a lot of topics and I loved it so much. So there you guys have it. Those are my top 17 books of 2017. I loved all these books so much and there's so many more that I loved but this is all I could talk about today. <laughs> so yes, if you have not seen my favorite manga, of 2017. I'll link that video down below and my favorite poetry of 2017 is also coming in the future so look out for that and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your top three favorite books of the year if you can narrow it down. I challenge you to narrow it down. Um, but yes, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had a fantastic reading year in 2017 and obviously we're already a ways into 2018 but I hope you have a fantastic reading year, a fantastic life, a fantastic year, whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! The fragile